Maxi scuttled the space with a spring in his swim, doing backflips whenever he got the chance. Nothing that happened today mattered at all. All that mattered, all that mattered was that he was about to see Lana. Sure, it had only been a few days since he'd last seen her, but that was entirely too long. Of course, in his excitement, Axie swam along in any given direction. At this rate, he would run into someone who wasn't Lana again. He needed to do what Neo always told him. He needed to focus. But then again, the tank wasn't very big. Eventually, he would have to find her. Lana! Lana! He finally saw her lovely figure, but it was in somewhat of an unexpected place. Liam's Rock, huh? Well, these those two are neighbors, after all. In any case, it's time to barge in. I'm sure she'll be overjoyed to see me. As Axie got closer, he heard a scared whimper and some... strange, off-putting noises. He peered in, curiously. For a little while, there was no conversation, but eventually Liam started speaking. Oh, uh, ow, ow, my eyes. I feel how thin the air is. That's a telltale sign that it's watching us. Thing. It's closer to us now than it has been in a while. Please. Just tell me you can feel it too, Lana. I know I'm crazy. This thing, it's real. I promise. I don't get it. What does it want? Is it somehow attracted to my suffering? Hey, it's going to be okay. There's some voice acting. You don't mean Ank, do you? He's gone now. Why don't we just try to relax together? Remember the deep breathing ex exercise I taught you earlier? Yeah. Oh my god, that fucking eyeball. I'm not talking about Ank. It's... I... Same eye that's been watching me these past few days. Right now... Step against the glass, staring at us. At me. I don't know why, but it wants me. I know what hallucinations are like. This is unlike anything I've ever experienced. I've been in pain the entire time I've been in the tank. But the eye. I feel like it thrives on that pain. Can you really, truly not feel anything? I'm afraid it might want to get you, too, after it's done with me, Lana. Hey, remember? Even if it seems scary, I'm here for you, Liam. I don't see anything, though. So when? When am I going to finally be able to leave this prison? The tank isn't a prison. It's our home. No. You're right. It would be wrong of me to blame the tank for any of this. It's probably not that bad here. Not really. Not completely. It's just this stupid body of mine. Always in pain. No extreme discomfort. I can't stand this place because it's where I am right now. And I wish that I wasn't so frightened. Lately, I'm scared of everything. In my own shadow. And the eye stares at me like a specter in the night. Its gaze has only gotten stronger. And it's on me right now. I just want it to leave all of us alone. Liam coughed three times in a row, followed by three hiccups. His stomach popped after each hiccup. It looked quite painful to Lana. But what I'm scared of, most of all, 
regardless of my sanity or health. It's not just for me, but what that thing, what the I might do to you. You've been so kind to me, and it might take you with us when it finally comes to take me away. I don't think I can handle that after all you've done for me lately. Oh, Liam. There's nothing to be scared of right now. It's just me and you in here. And don't worry about me. I don't like to brag, but I can take care of myself just fine. If push comes to shove. I'd like you to focus on resting. You've been fidgety all day. Whenever I woke up throughout the night, there you were, moaning and shaking. It's no way to live. So if you can, I'd like you to get some rest right now. Oh. Okay. I'll try. Thanks, Lana. Hmm. Lana noticed him trying to close his eyes. But after a few seconds, he was bolted awake, wincing, shaking, and gasping for breath. Was it an anxiety attack that caused his joltings? Was it some sort of pain in his body? Was he having breathing problems again? Lana thought it was likely a combination of all these things. And you would tell me one thing? Just how much does it hurt right now? Liam's immediate response to that was a sigh. I get up. My heart beats so loud that it exhausts me. I feel my body falling apart, so I can't swim. Hmm. When I lay down, I have this constant unending throat pain, which makes it hard to breathe. But, but it's all connected. The stabbing stomach pain I have on my left side is connected to the throat pain. It has to be. Also, if you're not here to guide me in a conversation, I can't concentrate. And, you know what? My memory fades away quickly. <laughs> oh, this is too much, isn't it? Have I, have I rushed, reached the threshold where I'm just blatantly whining yet? If this keeps up, I'll become the crotchety old man telling kids to get off his lawn. <coughs> Lana shook her head. No matter what Liam was feeling, it was obvious he was in some sort of terror. And if venting helped him in any way whatsoever, well then she wanted him to vent his heart out. You know, what you said a bit ago reminded me of a hallucination I had earlier. This one wasn't like the eye. I knew it wasn't real. In the hallucination, there were a bunch of people in white coats. They were asking me a single question. On what scale is your pain? They said the scale was from 1 to 10, with 10 being the highest. God, I hate that question so much. That scale doesn't make any sense. You can't quantify or compare pain. It's just not right. Lana sighed under her breath. Sleep deprivation. And Nidonia going mad. In what way can you quantify those? Hey there. It all counts. Pain is pain. But like I said before, we can't focus on it. It's not healthy. Let's just try to calm down and relax. Find your center. Center. No offense. But my problems are a little more complicated than just trying to find your center. I'm just trying to help. I'm sorry. That was rude of me. I'll, I'll try the breathing exercise. And thanks for listening to all my whining. Hey, don't worry. It's perfectly understandable. Whine all you'd like. If it were me who was in pain, then I'd want someone to listen to me, too. So I get it. 
and you might not think so, but you do have the capacity to beat this. Thanks. I don't know how much I appreciate that. What felt like token words to him actually meant a whole lot more. Liam really did appreciate how kind and selfless Lana had been to him lately. He also knew that she couldn't be around him all the time. She had to go to see Neo or Axie or, or do something on her own. She talked to him all the time about the decorating project that she'd began in her corner using plants. She'd want to finish it. But he really needed someone to be there all the time. He'd reached the point where each and every moment was a nightmare. His body was constantly in some sort of pain, and constantly in the flight or fight response. He was scared of the progressive brain damage that was likely happening in his head. He was scared of completely losing his memory and personality in the future. He was scared of this reality staying permanent. Anna. Liam didn't want to say it, but she came closer to where he was huddled, as if reading his mind. No worries. Just try your best to relax. And even if it's hard, even if it's impossible, I don't blame you. And then she took her hand and touched him lightly on the back. It was an innocent touch, but for Liam, the feel of another physical kindness was something he felt like he had yearned for far before entering the tank. She stood there, to him like a beacon of hope. Actually, if I can look at this from another perspective here, there's something that each of these axolotls seems to represent. Neo, or I'm sorry, yeah, Neo seems like he's the inquisitive part of somebody's personality. Axolotl is the positive. Um, Lana is like the, the, the kindness aspect or empathy. It's the empathy and sympathy. While, um, while he is like is the anxiety that people feel. And Ankh is like the inner darkness of somebody else's personality. Like he's, it's kind of like they're the, the five personality traits that make up an entire person or something. Let's kind of get... Liam, that's his name. I feel stupid that I... I was trying to... I feel like an idiot. I feel like an idiot. But at least that's the kind of impression that I'm getting here. Caressing him lightly and kindly. He was still scared. He was still frightened. He still had body pain. He still had the feeling he was going insane. But the touch made things a little better, at least for a single moment. Outside still stood Axie, watching quietly. He hadn't heard every word correctly, but he had seen every action of the last few minutes. He was muttering to himself. Why are you alone with Lana? Hi! Do you guys normally do this sort of thing? So Lana goes to see him. But she hasn't gone to see me in at least a few days. Okay, it's okay. Uh, you... You know you're the coolest dude in, in the history of ever, Axie. You just go in there and woo her like usual. Somehow, this was incredibly nerve-wracking for the normally fearless Axie. But he went in anyway. Uh, hey, muchachos. How you doing? They both looked up. Liam looked particularly startled. Oh, Axie! Hey, what's up? Uh, nothing, you know, just uh, swimming around, doing my cool new thing, and I happened to be in the area. What were you guys up to? Axie, do you mind if we talk in private? Uh, of course not! <laughs> uh, let's go! The way Lana had phrased that was strange, but Axie still felt good knowing she wanted to talk to him alone. Once outside, Lana seemed to shine in the bright rays of the tank. Hey, Lana! Before we talk, you want to see a trick? Mm, yeah. 
Not waiting for a response, Axie spun around and performed an amazing somersault, just like he'd practiced the previous night and morning. Also, I just kind of realized, unless it's just the angle, it looks like Lana is a bit bigger than Axie over here. He executed it nearly perfectly, but his hands were still an inch short of touching his tail mid-spin. What do you think about that? It was nice, Axie. You practiced really hard, huh? It'd work. I try. Oh, you know how I do. Axie knew she was so impressed that it was hard to put her thoughts accurately into words. But we've got to talk about something serious. I don't know how often you see or visit Liam, but his rock is on my side of the tank. So it's a lot easier for me to see the situation clearly. Axie? He's in a lot of pain. A lot of suffering. Sometimes the suffering seems so horrible that I can't even imagine it's real. Once in a while, he'll have a calm moment, but most other times? Horrible screaming. Gasp moans of agony. It's almost like he's fighting something on, he's fighting something on multiple levels. Physically and mentally. It's gone to the point where he has these delusions. That someone or something is watching every move he makes. Not only that, but Ank is a huge jerk to him. Ank is just a huge jerk in general. He comes over frequently to antagonize him, tormenting him in any way he can. I had to drag the information out of Liam because he didn't seem to want to talk about it. But apparently the things Ank says to him are devastating. If it's Ank, I can actually believe that. Something has to be done. Just the other day, I was doing my usual morning routine, getting the plants ready, looking over the previous day's work. But then I heard poor Liam moaning from a distance. And when I arrived, he was in a miserable state. Crying, gasping for breath against the edge of his rock, unable to move to a comfortable position without my help. And so, well, I've been with him since. Oh! Wow! No, I never really see that guy come out. Man, that's a real stinker. What do you think is going on? I have no idea. I know it's bad. Really bad. I also know that I have to do something before it's too late. Too late? What do you mean? Axie, Liam told me how much pain he's in. I don't know if he has a disease or what, but he's in really bad shape. And I'm afraid he might... He trailed off and didn't finish her sentence. Axie wondered what could possibly happen, but he couldn't think of anything that bad. Axie knew what death was, but it didn't seem possible in here. Like Neo said, they didn't even need to eat or go to the bathroom in the tank. They were playing by different rules. So, in what way can we help? Not completely sure yet. I've been thinking about possible solutions all day. He has so many problems, though. First, we've got to get him out of the pain. Um, improve his quality of life. Next, I've got to convince him that there's no eye glued up against the outside of the tank or whatever watching us. That's more or less all he's been focused on today. And it would really help if Ank stopped coming by to scare him and make fun of him. Liam didn't say, but I suspect Ank has been startling, starting to get physical as well. I'm sure if we get rid of the bully, his situation should improve a bit. That guy. There must be something truly wrong with him. Picking on someone in such an awful state. He's just a jerk. But first things first. Stopping his pain. But the only person I can think of to ask for advice is Neo. He's almost as much of a hermit as Liam is, so we haven't seen each other much lately. But he's smart. Maybe he'll have an idea. It's worth a try. Want me to come with you? Egghead's my bud. I actually just left his pad. That would be nice. 
But what if something happens while we're gone? What if Aang comes around to torment him again? Would you like me to stand guard? Like a real soldier? That would also be nice. But the only one he says he trusts to be by him is me. Oh, I just realized her color shifted to like a... I thought it was slightly more... No, wait. Never mind, her color didn't shift. I'm just colorblind. <sighs> Doesn't seem like there's a perfect solution. I'll just have to go to the lab, but I'm so worried. A light bulb lit up with an axi. He knew what he had to do. I'll just go find Ank and tell him to stop beefing on Liam. I'll solve this whole conflict in one fell swoop. If you need someone to beef upon, let it be me. I can take beefings like peanut butter sandwiches. Do we, don't, we haven't even had any peanut butter sandwiches. I can take them! I'm really the raddest dude, huh, Lana? I'm worried about that too, Axie. Ank is so grouchy and so mean. I suspect he might be dangerous. Do you think you'll really be okay? I don't want you to go alone if there's any sort of risk. <laughs> I'll be just fine. Don't worry about me. Let's just work together for my boy Liam's sake. Oh, thank you so much, Axie. You really are the sweetest axolotl in the tank. He felt his heart flutter. The second Ank gets violent, just get out of there. Swim to the lab. Don't get hurt. That's an order, soldier. Roger, Wilco Commander. What? I'll go tell that dude what's up. And then Liam will feel a little safer. Then you'll feel safer too, he said in his heart. Okay, okay, Axie. Let's meet up here after we're both done. Maybe then I can get Liam to trust you like he trusts me. He needs all the friends he can get right about now. Probably, yeah. Of course. I'll see you soon. The coolest dude ever waved goodbye to his admirer and set off on his mission. Hmm. Hmm. Bang. Bang, bang. Bang, 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 bang. The banging sound was familiar to Axie. It was a tone he had heard faintly each night while getting ready for bed. A distant echo in the background as he practiced his somersault. Normally, it was hard to make out. But when the tank was devoid of background noise, the banging, no the banging was unmistakably clear. Axie had never paid it much mind until now. It was like the wind, or the whirring of the void. Something to ignore. Something in the background. Let me guess, Ank bashing against the glass of the tank, I imagine? White noise. As he headed heroically to his side of the tank, the banging got louder by the second. When he thought about it, Axie recalled the banging being there since his very first night in the tank. Yet until now, he'd never questioned it. It had never been important. Why question it when his mind was elsewhere? when there were tricks to be learned and life to be enjoyed. Now the banging had confronted him. Axie came across a sight which had made it all make sense at once. Upon the corner of the tank where Ank lived, there he was, running head first, full speed into a wall. Over and over. Yep. Trying to break out. Trying to do... What exactly? Strengthen himself. Or perhaps break himself? Bang. 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 No, Axie wasn't afraid of this guy. It was his job right now to stop Ank from picking on Liam. Another hard pound. Ank turned around to ready himself again, and his eyes filled with surprise. Well, well, what a shocker. It must be my goddamn birthday. <laughs> if it isn't Axie the asshole, to what do I owe this honor? Don't tell me you've been finally decided to bash your head into the glass too. Ah, that would make me so happy. No, Ank. 
but I've come here for an important reason. Oh? And what that might that be? Lana and Liam. As of this moment, you're going to stop picking on them. Oh boy. Of all the stupid things you could have come up to me and said. But hold on. What do you mean exactly? Stop picking on Lana. <laughs> Is that bitch making up stories? As for Liam, I'll admit to giving him what he deserves. And my answer is no, I'm not going to stop. That garbage is going in the trash can where he belongs soon enough. Come on, buddy. Just pick on me instead, okay? Leave him out of your bullying. He's sick. Oh, Axie, you little moron. I thought I made it very clear earlier that I'd never willingly do you any favors. As much as I'd rather kill you and make your life a living hell instead, there's no way I can just abandon Liam like that. But hey, don't look so glum. Maybe you'll get your chance with me too someday. However, there are priorities in life you must follow, and picking on Liam is, quite frankly, my biggest. Let's see. How do I put it, so even an ignoramus like you understands? Do you know what a tier list is? I wouldn't expect an uncultured swine such as yourself to know about them. A tier list is something that determines the worth of something. And I have a tier list of my own. Re oh my god. For this tank and all the annoying shitheads who inhabit it. Does somebody say pizza with pineapples? Tony Spacey's taco is lit. You suck with the most hated one on the very bottom. See, Lana's at a normal tier. But if that bitch is making up stories, perhaps I'll have to reconsider her position. I ask you, why would I pick on her when literally everyone else in the tank is more annoying? Axie, as for you, you're a high tier piece of shit. Honestly, to put it quite simply, I just don't like you. And Liam, on the other hand, He's something completely different. A different beast altogether. What an awful creature. Every second he's still breathing. It kills me a little on the inside, you know. That said, Liam is not long for this world, so you won't have to worry too much longer about me picking on him. Ideally, it'd be nice to torture him for a bit before, first before killing him, of course. But wow, it's so... You've even gotten me curious. And aside from Lana, I don't really care much about... I don't really care much about much else. I sense that you're a bad guy, but why do you target Liam the most of all? What did he do to you? There might be a reason, but shit if I know it. I just hate him with all my being. My blood boils seeing the fucker. From the moment I saw him on that first day, his fragile body... His useless attitude. No matter which way you slice it, he's a parasite. A useless pile of garbage. And I've reached my limit of patience. I'm gonna snuff him out soon, and this time for good. Are we really so different, Axie? Think about it. All you ever talk about is stalking the only girl in the tank. You're pathetic. Don't kid a kidder, Ank. You're the bad guy here, and I'm the hero who's going to shut you down and get a happy ending for me and Lana. You're such a dumbass, Axie. The corniest, stupidest dumbass I could ever imagine. The two axolotls stared at each other with intense determination. Jesus. Which was stronger, Axie's lust for friendship or Ankh's murderous hatred for Liam? Well, it looks like we're at an impasse. Yeah, there's got to be some way we can solve this. I'm not going back to Lana without good news. If I have to, I'll get the egghead involved too. There's no way he can beat all of us. Ank let out a snarl. You really want to tell your girlfriend that you went to your big brother for help because you couldn't do it alone? Besides, Neo wouldn't be a problem at all. Axie bit his tongue. I imagine that nerd is cooped up all alone in his lab right now. Eh? Probably wouldn't even stop his research for you. Well, yes, he's in his lab, but he's also with Lana. 
Ah, that's perfect. So he won't bother us if we get a little messy. All right then, enough beating around the bush. All this talk is getting me hungry for some action. I know how we can settle this in a civilized manner. How about we play a game? Yes, a simple game. And as much as it pains me to say this, I'll even leave Liam alone if you happen to be the winner. Which you won't be, of course. How's that sound? Do you mean it? Really? Really? However, should you, the hero or whatever idiotic name you want to call yourself, lose, then you also lose the right to protect Liam. And I can torture him for however long I like until I'm ready to snuff him out of this world for good. How's that for a gamble? A true gamble between men. All or nothing. Just think of how happy Lana will be when you tell her the good news. You little dog shit. Doesn't this seem like a good deal? What the hell is this? Actually, you know what? I'm saving. Just saving because I can right now. We can just cut all the bullshit anyway. Snip, snip. It's certainly not something I'd offer every day. But for whatever reason, my workout left me in a really great mood. Axie didn't need to think. He felt something in himself aside from his duty to protect Lana. An excitement to beat Ank at whatever evil, likely unfair game he had thought of. Axel hadn't realized this about himself before, but he felt like there was something, there's some small part of him with a competitive edge. He couldn't lose, with all his motivation and skill. Besides, he had love on his side, and love was so much stronger than hate. All right, Ank, bring it on. Bring it on. I'll beat you at whatever game you want to play. For the third time in so many minutes, Ank was laughing. God damn. Do you even listen to yourself? It's so hard not to make fun of you each time you talk. You don't even know what game I'll propose or what rules. I don't need to know no rules. I'm confident I can thwart you in anything. If it's for Lana. Yeah, I feel the same. I can beat anyone at anything. If it allows me to smash that parasite's head in. So, what are we doing then? Follow me. Take a look around. They were now in the open waters of the tank. It's not like there are any supplies for traditional games. So why don't we have a competition that needs no tools? Let's, you and me, have a good old-fashioned race. Axie blinked. A race? Is that it? Oh gosh, I thought you were going to say something a lot more sadistic than that. Only an idiot wouldn't appreciate a good, clean, old-fashioned race. The terms are simple. Well, the tank isn't really big enough to make this very long. We'll have to extend the length artificially. We'll start here, side to side. Right now, we're suspended in roughly the center of the tank in terms of height. There's a lot of space above and below us. There are three things you'll have to touch in this race. First, we'll go down. You'll need to touch the floor of the tank with both hands. Next, we'll ascend to the ceiling. With, with the bottom, doesn't count unless you touch the very top with both hands. From there, we'll make a straight line through either side of the void, passing the lab. And our final destination will be the first one who can touch Liam's shitty rock. Once I get there, the first thing I'm doing is socking him right in his stupid face. Can you wrap your mind around these simple instructions? Or do I need another visual aid, Axie? I got it. First bottom, then top, then we go straight to Liam's. Is that it? That's it, shit for brains. As long as we keep to those rules, anything goes. I just hope we're not interrupted by those other assholes. I don't think that'll happen. Those two are inside the lab, like I said. Good. Are you ready? Why do I have this sick feeling that Axie is gonna lose? Hmm. He was born ready. He spent all day and all night doing water acrobatics in order to impress Lana. 
Most importantly, he was probably faster than him if Enk's speed pounding into the wall before was any indication. How are we starting? On the count of three. We'll both go at the same time. Axie noticed Enk taking a deep breath. He spoke with such confidence, but was it possible that he was nervous? I'm serious about this, Axie. You're about to get fucked. Three. Two. Two. One. Go! Axie dashed ahead without warning. A burst of speed that surprised even him. That's a termination for you. Didn't expect that, did you, Ank? Ank wasn't very far behind, though. In fact, he was nearly within grasp of Axie's legs. Don't underestimate me, Axie. If there's something I can do better than any shithead in this world, it's charging towards something. As opposed to the sprinting start of Axe, Axie, Ank fashioned himself more as an endurance runner. He was slowly starting to catch up and showed no signs of fatigue. No. I can't let him get ahead, even for a second. Think, Axie, think. Axie couldn't think of anything that would be miraculously give him more of an upper hand. So he had to rely on sheer willpower. He pushed himself as fast as he could go, and finally the gap between him and Ank widened a little more. <sighs> Almost. The bottom is right ahead. Ank was now a small yet meaningful distance behind Axie. All right. At least for right now, I'm in the lead. I did it! I hit the first checkpoint first! Having made it to the floor, Axie hit both his hands onto the bottom of the tank, feeling the rocky surface of victory. Okay, go me! But now I've got to keep on going. Axie braced himself ready to dive upwards with a burst of speed, but that was interrupted. Wham! One second, Axie was looking up, and the next his head was on the ground staring at some plants. What the heck happened? In no time at all, Ank had touched the floor and was already hurling up towards the ceiling. He was nowhere in Axe's immediate sight. Did that guy... Did he just hit me with his tail? He cheated. There was no time to think about it. Should have realized that he was going to cheat. Axie swam up furiously. When he got close enough, he started yelling at Ank, despite knowing that he should have been focusing his energy on movement. Ank! I thought you said this was going to be a clean fight! Ank had a shit-eating grin on. I said anything goes as long as we follow the rules. How is that not the very definition of fair? Now if you'll excuse me. Ank used his lead to an even greater extent and headed uh, upwards quickly, like a rocket. Axie wasn't done, though. Not by a long shot. Not even close. He felt an immense power in his heart and shot upwards. Quickly, quickly, quickly. Like an inverse of the last checkpoint, now Axie was the one gaining on Ank. In no time, I'll be able to pass him. Unless he bitch slaps you again, then Ank stopped. Axie had no time to react. Ank changed his trajectory from up to down. And he slammed downwards on Axie's face. Axie felt his direction start to go haywire, and he struggled to stay stable on the same path as before. In his days, Ank had used him as a springboard to get more momentum. Now he had an even bigger lead. You cheater! Once again, not cheating, Axie. Remember, anything goes. Axie swam harder than before, huffing and puffing, chugging forward as hard as he could. There's no way he's gonna get me again. After they got through this path upwards, it would be a lot harder for Ank to mess with Axie in the open air of the tank. I'm coming for you, Ank. As Axie started closing the gap, Ank stopped yet again. He began a strong slam toward Axie's head. Dang it. I'm going too fast. I can't change my direction on such short notice. Ank was priming himself to hit, priming himself, any second now. Coming down like a bullet. Oh, Ank. Not this time. Press S to wreck Ank. Instead of dodging it completely, Axie did what he had been doing all last night. All morning and all day. He did a somersault. The same one that would ine inevitably impress Lana. And in that somersault, he dodged Ank. His hands caught the grip of Ank's tail. Hey, what are you? 
Ank had no time to grasp the situation he found himself in. So long, Grey Bowser. <laughs> Grey Bowser. <laughs> God damn it. Okay, I'll give you that one. Axie threw him by the tail into the direction of the wall. Ank spun and spun and spun. All the while, Axie rocketed higher towards the ceiling. He had the biggest lead gap in the whole race now. Ank still hadn't even completely recovered by the time Axie put both his hands on the ceiling and felt the cold glass of the tank's top. I'm in the clear. He's so far behind. As long as I stay on the straightaway to Liam's Rock, there's no way he can mess with me now. Axie sped along, efficiently and gracefully. The hero looked to have won. At one point, he glanced behind him and saw Ank's sullen, enraged face. Uh-oh. As he passed the beautiful void in Neo's lab, Axie felt a string of butterflies in his stomach. Lana was down there. Soon he'd get to see her again. As much as he wanted to just abandon the race and swim down there right this second, that would do no good. Yeah, because if we do, then he's gonna get permission to beat the shit out of Liam, and we don't want that. She'll be delighted to know that Ank was going to stop picking on Liam. I'll see you soon, Lana. He gave himself another speed boost as he rocketed past the lab. Ank was nowhere in sight now. <sighs> Axie was absolutely exhausted. The most exhausted an axolotl had ever been, probably. But he had done it, and he had done it well. He touched Liam's rock, his home, and immediately collapsed on the side of it for support. Who is there? Have you finally come for me? Liam! <sighs> Holy shit. I don't see you, bud. It's just me, Axie. Oh, there you are. Hey, no need to worry, brother. That bully? He... Ugh. He won't be picking on you. Not ever again. You're safe. All thanks to the hero. It had been an intense race. Even if the ending was a little anticlimactic. That should teach him not to mess with Lana or her friends. Axie waited triumphantly on his throne. He stared into the distance. And yet he waited another second longer. And then another. Huh? Is Ank that slow? Axie? Liam must have been feeling a little saner than usual. Why do I feel the gaze upon me? So much more in your presence. So much for that. What's wrong, Liam? What are you talking about, bud? What's wrong? How can I even begin to explain? Everything's wrong. Even if the eye wasn't here. Do you know where Lana is, Exy? Oh, she's at Neo's. I'm worried about her. She hasn't been gone this long in a while. Can you check on her? Please, take the gaze with you. Axie had finally caught his breath. For whatever reason, it didn't seem like Ank was coming. I'll be back in a jiffy. Axie once again sped off in the direction of the void. I don't like this because if Ank comes by, he's... Ank! What are you doing? Let me go! His hands were wrapped around her throat. It's good fortune that a shit brain has happened to be swimming out here alone. Thanks for the tip, Axie. Axie may have won the race, but I'll win the war. I'll ask again. Just what are you doing? She squirmed around, but Ank was too strong. Whenever she moved, he tightened his grip. I don't like hearing other people whine. So just shut the fuck up until we get to our destination. And be a good bargaining chip. Leave him alone! He's in enough pain without you going off on him. Oh, don't you worry, your little lying head. He won't be in pain much longer. I can't seem to control my urges today. Lana! Axie had shown up, again huffing and puffing. His body so exhausted. Ank, we did the race. We had a deal. Let her go. Axie, you keep confirming you're exactly the moron I know you are. It sure took a while for you to realize I wasn't finishing the race. Just stop. Stop. Let her go. Yeah, sure. I'll let her go. 
just for you. Let her go now! Right now! This very instant! You're always so impatient, Axie. Here's what's going to happen. We're gonna swim back to Liam's shitty home and you're gonna let me end him. Then, and only then, can I guarantee the safety of your shitty friend. Where the hell is Neo in all this? Seriously, where is he? Axie clenched his jaw. I'm not letting you do that. You'd better not give in to his demands, Axie. Protect Liam, he's in a lot of pain. Shut up! That's exactly why he needs to die. He's worthless. Hank squeezed tighter on her throat. This is nothing. Liam's gone through way worse. Axie had a tough face on, but inside he was sweating. Lana, Lana, he had to get her out of the situation somehow. But she wanted to keep Liam safe above everything, and he knew it. I'm not letting you near him. But you'd better let her go. I can't stand this. Well, Axie, it looks like you and I have reached yet another impasse. This time I'm not being nice. You want to play this the hard way. The messy way. Hank made a nosed dive downwards, Tana, Lana in tow. Axie was quick to follow. What are you doing? Hank stopped just above the surface of the floor. If I have to go through all of you to get that son of a bitch, then so be it. I will not hesitate. Bang. Smash. Lana! Hank smashed her head into the floor. Over and over. Want to change your mind? Axie. Oh. Is that blood on her forehead? Smash, 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 smash. Jesus! Better make up your mind on what you want to do quick. Don't know if she can take too much more of this. Maybe I should just get rid of her. Chuck her into the... Heart pounding, Axie felt his mind starting to fade. He felt something in him break. Uh. Murder. Axie charged forward, fast and determined. He knocked Ank away from Lana in a swift smack. Uh, Axie. In his rage, Axie didn't even look to see if she was all right. Don't hurt Anna. Ank was on the floor about to get up when Axie grabbed him. How do you like it? Axie smashed his head into the floor. Jesus. <laughs> you fucker. I'm used to this. Axie didn't stop. He kept the momentum going and smashed him ag yet again, and again, and again, and again, and again. Axie, Axie, please stop. The words fell on deaf ears. You hurt Lana. That's unforgivable. <laughs> and just what are you going to do about it? Axie swam upwards a few meters, holding Ank. Then he swam forward and crashed downwards, pounding him headfirst right into the ground. <laughs> I've gotta admit, another person doing that to me hurts a little more. Shut up. Axie kept pounding him into the ground. That's enough, Axie! I said that's enough! I love her so much. And I can't stand you. What are you doing, Axie? Axie was flying up towards the center of the tank. Axie. You can let me go now. You piece of shit. No. Axie was near now. Nearer to the void. It cackled and rumbled and Axie could feel its hunger pains. 
Oh, you're gonna put him in there. And he knew he had to appease it. You're not going to... You do. I will haunt your fucking nightmares. Axie, Hank, what are you doing? Neil must have heard the commotion from outside his house. Took you long enough. Stay back, Neo. Neo looked worried. He observed the void closely, but always carefully. Axie right now was entirely too close for comfort. I don't know what's going on. I've been busy for a while now. But Axie, whatever kind of game this is, you need to stop. That's right, Axie. Stop. Axie felt like he wasn't in control of himself anymore. The image of Ankh throwing down Lana into the dust, making her bleed, kept flashing over and over in his head. Fair enough, I mean, I can't blame him. When would he have stopped? He probably wouldn't have. Would he have stopped before she died? He probably would have killed her. He would have killed her. And for that, he needs to die. All it took was one hard shove. And Ankh was chucked right into the middle of the void. He was screaming now. An unnatural primal scream of pain and terror. In an instant, it consumed him, engulfed him, fed on him. His body dissolved into the mass. Not a speck of dust left. The thunder cackled, and a strange digestive-like sound emitted from the area Ankh was absorbed into. Axie was shaking, so slightly. For a few seconds, there was only that whirring of the void, newly appeased. hell was that? Axie. Neo swam up to confront him. Leave me alone. He had to be calm. 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 Cool as a cucumber. The one that would hurt Lana was gone now. Now she would be safe. Where was she anyway? Oh, she's right next to him. A slap across his face. How could you? She was crying. He was a terrible person. He did terrible things. But you just killed him. You killed him. In cold blood. He was going to kill you, you know. It was for you, Lana. I, I didn't have a choice. We could have locked him up somewhere. Anything. She was quivering. That was terrible, Axie. I can sort of guess what happened, though. He gestured to Lana's injuries. Still, there must have been something else. Axie was full out bawling now. I'm... I'm sorry. That's not the way the coolest dude ever should act. Quiet. Just leave me alone for now. She swam quickly back toward her side of the tank. I'm gonna need for you to tell me what happened. Not now. I need time. It's to practice my somersault. In order to impress Lana. Axie disappeared towards his side of the tank, now completely barren of anyone else except him. Neo stood there. He looked at the void a second ago, but it looked as though the immediate chaos had passed. Wow. To think it would happen like that. It looked horrible. He admitted that much to himself. But still, that was very, very interesting. The message from earlier today, he was right. The conflicts in the tank may lead one of you to kill another. The void will be very interesting to observe. What will it spew out tomorrow? I've done a lot of experiments on the Void these past few weeks, but never one like this. I can't say I liked the way this turned out. 
Not one bit. Is there really only one path that leads back home? Okay, so... It seems like these guys are stuck in a controlled environment, and... It's like some sort of experiment by some sort of other force that's kind of pitting all of them against each other, possibly. They gave every every axolotl some sort of personality trait. And... It's some sort of experiment to see how long they can last being with each other until they started killing each other. That's kind of the feeling that I'm getting here. What the hell do you want from us, RB? RB Axolotl. Oh! Well, that's what the RB means. Interesting. <laughs> <laughs>